What I'd like to do, spend a few minutes talking about today is glucose transport. Now, my real reason for talking about glucose transport is not to teach you everything there is to know about glucose transport, but it's to highlight the proteins that are embedded in cell membrane and the differences between facilitated diffusion and active transport. And glucose is a lovely example where actually both come into play. So just to remind ourselves, what is diffusion? Well, we simple diffusion is where we have a relatively high concentration versus an area of low concentration and particles, it can be any sorts of particles, move from the high concentration towards the low concentration area and this requires no energy. And that, so that's straight diffusion. If we remind ourselves what is facilitated diffusion, well we need to draw ourselves a little membrane first. We put a high concentration on one side of the membrane, we put a low concentration on the other side, and facilitated diffusion means that we have some sort of gateway, and it's usually a controlled gateway, that then allows these particles to move down their gradient depending on the um, arrangement of that gateway. And this is called facilitated diffusion. And the last one in our series that we need to know about is active transport. And in a very simple model, if we have a, again, we put the same high concentration on the outside and a low concentration on the inside, active transport has some sort of membrane protein again but in this case the membrane protein can move particles usually ions and things against the gradient but to do that requires the input of energy as ATP so these are the three fundamental methods that material usually ions proteins uh, molecules move across and around cells. So let's get back to our story about glucose transport. And let's remind ourselves that this is universal to all cells in the body require some sort of glucose transport from the external world to the internal cellular, internal cellular environment. So we'll call this the external and this is the internal. And the commonest arrangement for transport of glucose molecules across this membrane is that we have a higher concentration on the outside and we have facilitated diffusion across that membrane. So we have a uh, channel with a gateway that allows the glucose to move by straight gradient diffusion across the membrane. But just interestingly, there are actually four known variants of this channel, four different different channels. And channel four, the, the last one, is actually interesting in that the controlling of the gateway of the of channel 4 called, we, we don't need to know but it's called, oh, I'll just write it out for you, GULT4, of this particular arrangement of the protein, the gateway in this case is controlled by insulin. And this gateway is found in fat tissue in the body. But fundamentally most cells in the body, we're seeing glucose, just to remind ourselves, glucose molecules are moving down their gradient by facilitated diffusion and not requiring any energy input. Now there's one place where that's actually not true which makes it quite interesting and that's in the kidney. In the kidney 
and it differs in different parts of the kidney but we're not going to worry too much about that. The fundamental arrangement of the kidney is to expel uh, how shall we draw this is to if we if we call this the inside of the body and we call this the outside of the body the fundamental arrangement of the kidney is to get waste products to the outside but at the same time not to or resorb or bring back or not to lose anything that's essential to life. For example, um, in the production of urine, uh, a, a great deal of water is reabsorbed to try and conserve water in the body. And the other one, the obvious one we're going to talk about, is glucose. Glucose is uh, an es essential element to the body. It, it actually provides um, the, it, it provides part of the process that mitochondria use to produce ATP from ADP is required. It requires glucose. It's required for many other things as well. So it's an essential component that we don't want to find in our urine. And in fact, a test of the health of your kidneys is to test urine for, urine for glucose concentration. It should be next to zero in, all, in normal healthy kidneys. So let's just think about this for a minute. We have a fundamental problem here. Because as we take out more and more of the glucose and return it to the body, as we take more and more out of the urine and return it to the body, we are starting to come to the situation where we have to push glucose molecules against their gradient. So it's far higher concentration on this side inside the body or inside the cells of the kidney than in the urine side where it's a very low concentration of glucose. So we are pushing against, against the gradient. So in this case, if we look at our little list of the fundamental ways we can move things across cell membrane, we clearly can't use facilitated diffusion. We actually have to now use active transport. And that's what happens. So at this point here, we are going to have to use some ATP to move the glucose back across the barrier. But the neat thing is we can do it in a double, a double manner. Remember also that the relative level of sodium is lower on the inside and higher on the potassium, oh, on the urine side. So we actually have a gradient here as well in sodium levels which is a normal intracellular to extracellular gradient. So what we actually do is we use this gradient to assist with this problem. So let's draw this out and explain it. Let's draw a high resolution piece of cell membrane. And let's draw two proteins in this cell membrane. First of all, we're going to draw our old friend a sodium-potassium pump. And here we're going to t draw another type of protein in the cell membrane. And we'll talk about this one in a minute, but this one is going to take responsibility for moving, um, for moving glucose. So first of all, let's remind ourselves, this is intracellular. We're doing it the same way up as we did this diagram here. 
So in the body becomes intracellular at this higher resolution and this becomes extracellular on this side and just to remind ourselves at the end of the day after all its processing this will become the urine. So the first thing we remember is that this is a classic sodium potassium pump which is going to end up producing for us it's going to take take the sodium from intracellularly and push it outwards remember back to that other video it does it in clusters of three and remember it uses energy to do this so at the end of the day what we have is a relatively high sodium concentration relative to a relatively low concentration intracellularly and what happens now is called co-transport and what happens in co-transport is we now see that sodium can move down its gradient very simple downward gradient but this protein will only allow sodium to move down its gradient if it's linked to a molecule of glucose and then the two can move together so what we're seeing here is the sodium gradient is dragging glucose back intracellularly against its gradient so the, the, the strength of the gradient of sodium is allowing it to tow the minute amounts of glucose back intracellularly in the kidney thereby over time removing the glucose from the extracellular environment and bringing it back intracellularly to then be put back in the blood and reused and at the same time that sodium is then put back onto the sodium pump to be expelled into the urine to maintain the gradient so you can see glucose transport itself in the kidney doesn't directly use energy what it does is indirectly use energy because that use of the energy produces the sodium gradient and that sodium gradient is used by another protein to co-transport glucose back into the cell to move it against its gradient.